Spider-Man has been a character that has existed for a very long time, even when first created was laughed at and told it would never work. Now Spider-Man is the biggest superhero in the entire world, and he's had quite a journey. There's been ups and there's been downs, but Spider-Man has always found a way into our hearts and will forever remain my favourite fictional character. But this video isn't about Spider-Man. Lately, I've been re-watching a lot of old Spider-Man cartoons and movies, and I started to ponder the question of which Spider-Man villain is actually Spider-Man's arch nemesis. And you might think it's easy to say Green Goblin or Venom, but when you seriously sit down and look at these villains, there's a lot to choose from. And although Goblin and Venom are contenders, there are a few more. So, to help us find Spider-Man's arch nemesis, there are some things that we need to take into account. 1. How much this villain has impacted Peter's life for the better or worse. 2. Have they hurt the people closest to Peter. 3. Have they left Spider-Man defeated emotionally and physically. And 4. Are they iconic? I've decided to narrow down our search to the most popular Spider-Man villains and we'll take a look at each character individually to see if they fit the criteria listed. I've chosen five of the many rogues gallery in the comic books and we're going to see which one of these villains is the victor in this fight, starting with Kraven the Hunter. Now Kraven might not be a villain you automatically think of when thinking who should be Spider-Man's arch nemesis, but Kraven actually holds a lot of potential thanks to one comic book in particular, Kraven's Last Hunt, as well as the Marvel Spider-Man 2 video game. Firstly, in this comic book, which is now infamous, follows a dying Kraven the Hunter who wants to finally kill Spider-Man so he can feel worthy before he dies. He buries Spider-Man alive and dons the classic black suit and thinks he can do a better job than Peter ever could. And the Spider-Man 2 video game follows a similar story about a dying Kraven, however his infatuation with Spider-Man is not instant and is brought on towards the end of the second act. Kraven instead is hunting down Spider-Man villains so he can try and find a worthy opponent to kill him before he dies by his own cancer. So starting with the comic, obviously Peter's buried alive and Kraven affects his reputation, but I would say in the grand scheme of things this doesn't affect Peter's life too much. Once this story ends, we kinda just move on. And similarly in the video game, Kraven does affect Peter's life. He ruins he and Harry's plan to heal the world, destroys the EMF, and causes the downfall of the symbiote, which sounds pretty bad, but at the end of the game, Peter moves in with Mary Jane, restarts the foundation, Harry is still alive, and they're working on a cure. Peter can even take a break as Spider-Man and leave the city to Miles. So, although for a short period of time he did affect Peter's life, by the end of the game it all gets wrapped up in a nice bow, so I wouldn't say the character has severely affected Peter Parker's life to the point of no return. And that also plays into has Kraven hurt the people closest to Peter. Unless you can count what happened to Harry in Spider-Man 2 game, Kraven never really went after Peter's loved ones, so I think we can rule that one out. The big one is that Kraven definitely left Peter defeated emotionally and physically. He literally kills him in the video game and causes Peter's emotional downfall to the symbiote by ruining his life and destroying the EMF. And even in the comics, he buried Spider-Man alive, so we can tick that one off as a yes. And the last thing to look at is whether Kraven is iconic or not. I believe in recent times he's become way more popular than what he was, but I still think there are villains more popular than Kraven the Hunter. So he makes a very strong case, but Kraven is not Spider-Man's arch nemesis. Moving on to the Lizard. This one will be quite simple, as I think Marvel don't really know what to do with this character, and in my opinion, whenever Kurt becomes the Lizard, he hurts himself and his family more than he hurts Peter. That's where that emotion comes from. I think the Lizard is very iconic, sure, but like Kraven, he hasn't got that star power compared to the others. Whenever I see the Lizard, I don't automatically fear that Spider-Man's loved ones are in danger, I more fear the ones around Kurt's life, like his wife or his son. Peter has always been able to defeat him pretty easily as well, so he's not destroyed Peter emotionally or physically. He's hurt the people around him though, as we know he killed Captain Stacy in The Amazing Spider-Man 1, so we can tick that one off, but again, the Lizard is not Spider-Man's arch nemesis. So getting into the big three here, let's take a look at Otto Octavius. This is where things start getting difficult. We all know and are familiar with Otto Octavius and his stories, so let's cut straight to the chase. Otto has definitely hurt a lot of people close to Peter, most notably indirectly causing the death of Aunt May in the video game as well as putting the ones Peter loves in jeopardy. He's obviously impacted Peter's life massively in the comics, 
And we'll tie this in with emotionally and physically defeating Spider-Man, as in Spider-Man's last ever comic in the original Amazing Spider-Man run, which lasted 800 issues, Otto takes over Peter Parker's mind, and Peter Parker dies in Otto's decaying body, which is pretty insane. So, Otto ticks a lot of the boxes. He was the last villain in the main 616 universe Spider-Man ever fought, so that should make him Spider-Man's arch nemesis, right? Well, the one thing that always sort of catches me off guard here is the fact when I think Spider-Man, Otto Octavius is a wonderfully written villain, he's just never struck me as the most iconic Spider-Man villain. He's perhaps the most dangerous with his mind, but he definitely isn't the most iconic. So, Otto Octavius is not Spider-Man's arch nemesis. Which brings us to our two final contestants, Venom and Green Goblin. Both have psychologically tormented Peter Parker's life. The symbiote emotionally destroyed Peter and changed who he was. Goblin has killed Gwen Stacy and put those he loves in intimate danger. Both of these characters are iconic enough and have definitely done enough damage to Peter Parker and have even gone as far to kill the people in his life. Or should I say, one of them has. To my knowledge, Venom has never actually killed anyone close to Peter, but has definitely tried. The only one actually coming to mind right now is Harry Osborn in Spider-Man 3, but that death was more inescapable, it wasn't actually meant for Harry, Venom didn't intend to kill Harry there. Whereas Goblin actually intended to kill Gwen Stacy, and as much as I think Venom is iconic, we have to think about the damage the Green Goblin has done. Venom might have inadvertently killed Harry, but Goblin intentionally killed not only Gwen Stacy, but Aunt May as well. Those are two of the most massive players in the Spider-Man mythos. He has left Spider-Man defeated so many times and left irrefutable emotional damage. So as much as I think this is a close call, I think the winner for Spider-Man's arch nemesis has to be Norman Osborn aka the Green Goblin. He's just an absolute menace in everything he's in and there's no telling the damage the Green Goblin is going to cause in Marvel Spider-Man 3 and the rest of the Spider-Man media. He has this iconicness about him, and when I think Spider-Man villains, the Green Goblin is the first one that comes to my mind. I also want to say a deciding factor is that most of the times we see Venom these days, he's actually more of an anti-hero. Green Goblin has never been an anti-hero, he's always just been a plain villain, but Venom has always been back and forth, so I don't even know if we can count him towards being a villain. But I mean, when he is the villain, he's stone cold bad. But my decision is final, Green Goblin. But make sure to leave your favourite Spider-Man villains in the comment section below so we can continue the discussion there. And without further ado, thank you all so much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.